sit down and talk to you guys. Hi, so the, my name is Harit. Today I'll be presenting um, on coordinator. It's nothing too technical, so I just really hope you guys can sit back, relax, and really just enjoy the um, presentation. Okay, so I think before we really dive into coordinator proper and try to understand what coordinators are, it's very important that we try to understand what kind of problem we are trying to solve. And yes, it's all too familiar problem, the massive field controller problem. You see, field controller is a central part of our iOS programming, and it's such a convenient place for us to put almost any kind of responsibility into it, uh, such as uh, UI codes, networking codes, persistent storage codes, and navigation codes, or any other kind of codes you can name it, you can put into it, such that sometimes, or rather, more often than not, our field controllers can balloon up to a size that becomes barely recognizable uh, later on if such convenience is not handled properly. So let's say you have done a some project and half a year later, you need to go back to that particular project and look at particular view controller. And before you clear that view controller file, your heart sinks. And you're like, I don't want to open that particular view controller file. Most likely, yes, you have that MVC problem. Because deep down, you know that the codes there are messy. The responsibilities of the codes are so tangled up that in order for you to understand uh, the things you have written, again, you need, you need to spend a substantial amount of time on it. And it's agonizing at its best. So in order to solve this sort of uh, architectural problem that arises from uh, MTC, which now stands for uh, Model View Controller, um, a lot of people believe that a new architecture actually is needed. Um, that's debatable, but that's not a topic of the day. So over the past years, I think since 2015, a lot of people have been coming up with uh, uh, architectures try to solve the MVC problem. And some of the um, famous architectures are namely Fiber, MVVM, and Redux. So despite the fact you have all those kind of different architectures, they all have the same goal. And that is to actually delegate the responsibilities away from view controllers to somewhere else. And in hope by doing so, try to elevate the clarity of your app. So if you think about MVVM, what it does is nearly, uh, it's not merely, what it does is that it tries to delegate the responsibilities of uh, model processing to another file. Right? So if you look at Redux, it's the same thing. Uh, it tries to delegate the responsibilities of uh, state preservation, state modification to another file. And our coordinator is doing the exactly the same. It's just that it's focusing on the transitioning parts uh, of the app. And then the coordinator actually was introduced by this guy called the Soros Kanlo, hopefully I pronounced his name correctly, in 2015. And the idea actually was taken from this book called the uh, Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture, uh, if anybody is interested. So like I say, um, the idea of a coordinator is simple. It risks uh, fuse controller or its responsibilities in dealing with transitioning codes and move these transitioning codes to a parent class or a helper class. Now, that sounds actually pretty good, but I think that before we really adopt any solution to our current problem, it's very important that we think about, is such a solution necessary? You see, changes don't come for free, right? Uh, whenever a new architecture or any kind of solution is introduced, a lot of times we end up writing a lot more codes. We, we end up creating a lot more files, and we need to do a lot more logic thinking in order to just maintain the original functional relationships. And in order to evaluate this question of, is it necessary? I think, personally, I always look at two aspects. First, is the problem serious enough? Second, is the solution elegant enough? So uh, for, today, we're gonna just, uh, for today, we're gonna look at the problem first. And so in order to demonstrate the problem, I've created an app called the Pokemon app. So this app is pretty simple. Uh, first, you have, you have four view controllers, which you call the first view controller, second view controllers, Pokemon detailed view controller and lock and view controllers. So this is a flow chart. So whenever, um, first view controller will, will be your main view controller. So whenever you go to the second view controller, if the second view, con if your user is not logging, it will actually go to login view controller. If the login is failed, it will go back to first view controller. If the login is successful, it goes back to second view controller. And if you tap a, a list of Pokemons on second view controllers, you'll go to uh, Pokemon detailed view controllers. I know that sounds abstract, so I'm gonna show you the example. Yeah. 
and the comes really slow, yeah. Okay, so this is like the first view controller. And if you go to the second view controller, because you haven't logged in, it will prompt you a login view controller. I you press cancel, it's failed, it goes back to the first view controller. All right? But let's say you go to the second view controller, um, and you press login, then a list of Pokemon will be shown up. And then if you choose a Charizard, and you can sort of like, you know, scroll, read the Charizard and stuff, and you can favorite it, right, things like that. And um, just to run this thing again, um, so that's basically the flow, but there's another one. Uh, uh, there's another feature of this app. So I just want to show you, so to understand that the flow more clear, uh, correctly. I shouldn't have. Um, so the same thing, uh, you can be a Pokemon here, right? You can be an uh, Eve, you can be a Pikachu, but let's say you are not logging, all right? It will just ask you not logging. But let's say now, cancel, you will go back. But let's say now you log in, you will log in and then automatically go to that. All right? So this is the um, so-called the flow of it. So I just hope uh, you guys are okay with it. So let's say we really sort of understand um, the flow of this app. And then we will realize that uh, second view control actually is a central part of dealing with almost anything, right? So what do we need? What, what kind of, let's say we are trying to do, uh, do right navigational or transitioning codes, what do we need? So there are, three thing, there are three things we need, which are called the three uh, UIV control delegates, right? First, we need a first view control delegate to pass a selected Pokemon to the second view controller, correct? Second, we need a, a login view controller delegate to actually pass the login status back to the second view controller, right? And then we, we have the Pokemon details view control delegate to actually pass the uh, favorite or unfavorite uh, data back to the second view controller, right? So now, let's look at the uh, the code for a little. So you see that, uh, let's say we go to the view controller, so I define a delegate, and then there's a lot of explanations, but we don't really need to go to the details, and we have a delegate, all right, to actually sort of say that, all right, um, to send things over. Um, we, then we go to login view controller, we will have this, um, whether the user has ever logged in or not, this particular protocol. I, I believe that people are familiar with UI view controller delegates, right? So we also have this um, Pokemon um, view controller, to, to tell second view control whether we have favorite or unfavorite anything. Now, if we go back to the second view control, because like I said, second view control is like the, the, the central thing of processing all the data. So it needs to be the delegate of the three people, the, 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 the three, um, three view controllers. Now, if you look at the codes, right? Right here, like I said, I, I saw a book mark say that there's too much creation codes, right? So you need to do a lot of things actually do the navigations. All right? You need to create a, um, the view controller. You need to make sure that delegate is passed. So this is, this is it. I'm going to go through the codes, uh, but yeah. But if you look at it, right, for second view controller, this is almost more than half of what an entire view controller has. Correct? It's a lot of codes, actually. So now we look at what. So now let's do an evaluation. So what are the pros of using um, UI view control delegates to do such a work? First, they are very robust, right, and they work. I mean, it's developed by Apple people, right? But now we look at the cons. Um, one of the cons is that it's relatively massive, like I've shown you. It almost occupies like half of uh, the view controller. Second, it can be a little bit hard to make sense of. Now, you will see that in order to maintain this relationship, for example, even when we go to app delegate, we need to sort of set up the second view controller as a delegate of view controllers. You will see that a lot of these codes are actually scattered around. So later on, let's say you come back, you try to understand how this entire flow works. You need to go to multiple view controllers in order to understand how everything works. But actually, that is not such a big issue. Uh, another one is that Despite the fact that we don't really understand how these things work, right? But I'm just going to tell you how it works. That there are certain responsibilities here I actually tangle up. That if you, you try to evaluate it, there may be some difficulties. And you may spend some time on it, but it's not that difficult because this is a very simple app. Now, the last thing which I think is the most important thing is that it's rigid. Why do I say that? So now imagine that in this particular app, you want to add a third um, Let's call it third tab. Now, instead of um, 
Pokemon, I want you to choose the trainers. Now, how would you do it just in terms of transitioning? You will need to write for that particular view control. You need to write another delegate functions just for it because in the currently you are not, because now you no longer pass Pokemon data. You are, you are passing a trainer data to the uh, third tab, right? So we need to write almost everything here all over again on a third view controller, right? Now the second thing that I think is rigid and I want the biggest, uh, my biggest frustration is that what if somebody comes along and tells you, say, hey, I screwed up. And I think that the flow is not right. I want to change the entire flow. Now what would you do? Now you need to go, go to almost every places to sort of delete all those codes and make sure that those co codes don't interrupt the new codes. And you need to redefine all the delegates and do all these things all over again. Now that is a big hassle, right? So that's the reason why sort of I, sort of I adopt coordinators. So what are coordinators? Um, let's say for every app, right, actually in the system, in the system they all maintain a stack of uh, view controllers, references. Now, for example, let's say you do push, um, pod, dismiss. Actually, you are talking to the sort of the invisible stack of uh, view control references. But you cannot really fully manipulate because they are sort of hidden from you. So coordinators, uh, the idea is very simple. It's sort of maintain a stack of view control references ourselves. And then we manipulate the transition from this stack of view controller uh, references instead of the system stack. Right? So this allows us to actually uh, the freedom and control over or how the transitions work. Okay? Um, before I really move on to uh, show you um, an, uh, another demo app, I just want to say that um, the original um, implementation of coordinator by uh, Soros uh, Kanlova, it's a little bit, it can be a little bit complicated, and there are some very tricky problems to solve along the way. And I have been using it, so I know that uh, it, it's kind of quite a lot of work. I'm going to show you a demo app um, like this. So, like I said, um, the original idea is that you to create a parent class. So you see that we ha I have a main view controller, right? Okay. So now I need to create a one-to-one -one main coordinator. So its job actually does is that it coordinates the navigations along, right? But then you will have a lot of codes. Now you have to maintain this entire module yourself. But then the good thing is what? Let's say you go to main view controller. This is the only navigation code you need to worry about. But still, I, I think that something can be improved. So as I, so as I, oh, before that, so if anybody is kind of interested in the original implementation, you can go to this, um, you just search for coordinator uh, medium. You will know this guy, and then he has a thorough uh, tutorial on it. So if you guys are interested, you can go back to the original implementation and then sort of see what are the cons and pros. Actually, I was quite tempted to show you guys an uh, uh, example of this, but I think that evaluation uh, of coordinators and then going through will take more than half an hour. So if you guys are interested, just go there. So what I'm gonna show you today, actually, is my own implementation of coordinators. Uh, because, like I said, I've been using coordinators and I, I feel that it's a hassle. So I thought, why not I write something for myself, right? So today what I'm gonna show you just, um, yeah, so I said that, uh, so I'm gonna show you this. So, um, first of all, we run the app, all right? So just make sure that everything works, okay? Now, if I get the second view controller, pops up, I cancel, goes back, set login, right? Favorite, come back. I'm not gonna show much, but we all know that it works, right? So, yeah, so now let's look at the codes. So, um, actually, actually, I, I wrote it as a library. Um, yeah, so if you guys are interested, you guys can actually take a look at this, um, the library that I've written. But, so I'm gonna go through about how those things are and how simpler you actually make uh, my app works. So um, first of all, you need to define this thing called the scenes, right? So you need to sort of define all your few controllers. Now, you're making it enough. Now yeah, I can you can have multiple uh, story block because I only have one story, storyboard called main. So I just have a storyboard. And you need to return what's the storyboard's name. And then you just need to return the view controller's type. And that's, that's about it. Of course, you need to also name your view controller the same name as your view controller class in order for it to work. So just to show you. Yeah. So the, okay, not this one. 
So you need to name, name it the same as the class. And that's all. So now let's look at the codes. So now if you go, go, if you go to the app that you get, right, you'll realize that we don't need all this anymore. Right? It's clean. We don't need those things. Now if you go to first view controller, you realize that we don't need those protocol delegate anymore. Right? We don't need them. And then if you go there, if you go down here, you don't, we don't need these things anymore. I will explain a little bit more, but just to delete some things here. And you go to view controller, same thing. You don't need the delegate anymore, so we can delete all this. And then you go to um, Pokemon, have I deleted it? You don't need this anymore. So I have a habit um, of defining things. For example, now what you can do, basically this class is called a uh, sync coordinator class. All right? So this is the only line of code you need to pass the data around and then sort of to perform certain functionality. And then for me personally, when I whenever I develop an app, I usually like to define the transitions as an enum in the view control class. So, and then you will have an execute function, which is to call this particular line, and then it will execute. So, Let's say now I want to go to my second view controller. All I need is just one piece of line here, right? Just one single line, and then it will perform that transition for me. I don't need to care about um, any other things. Same here. Now, the transitions here, because it's a pop to previous, right? Because we do a push and we pop to previous. So uh, this thing called then because we need to know like uh, which view controller we are popping to. So we need to put the main, because in the main we have all defined the view controllers that we know, right? So you sort of like, you can pop to the previous. Now second with a, uh, same with a uh, uh, login view controller. I just like to define these and then just call it. Now, the thing comes here is about the second view controller, right? Now you see all those codes, right, that we initially have, right, all these codes, right? We no longer need it. My we don't want to need it. So we don't need this as well. No transitioning codes. Just one line of it. And then that's almost as much as your view controller is. About like 100 something lines. And then if you look at these, these are the two functions that I saw defined. Right, you see? So, Whenever you are trying to pass a data, now if the, if the operation is push, present, or tap, right, and you try to pass the data, this function will be called. This function is called will move to interface. That means that whenever somebody sort of instructs, instruct me to actually appear on the interface, um, I'll, this, this, function will be, uh, this particular function will be called, and then you can process the data in it. Now another one is this, which is called the pot, uh, dis pot dismiss functions. This one is called whenever, let's say, you do a pop or dismiss function and you want to pass the data back. And then you can just do this. Yeah. So basically, you reduce almost all of, you don't need all, you don't need view controller delegates anymore. You just do a very simple um, thing here. And then the logic is a lot um, cleaner. Yep. So yeah, um, oh, it's just, just um, just one thing, for anybody who is sort of like uh, trying to look out for the, uh, like the library or something, right? uh, because I've been rather busy, so I wrote it pretty short. So uh, there are two problems. First is that it's the same as coordinator. The moment you use it, you have to stick with it. Right? You cannot use your normal transitioning codes. Like I say, we maintain our own step of uh, view controllers references. But this can be improved. Uh, I, I have some very dumb, dumb way of doing it, but I'm thinking of a more elegant uh, solution. Second thing is that because I wrote it for my own, so my app only has a tab view controller and a navigational controller. So currently, this one only supports tab view controller and navigational controller. So when I'm free, I will add the speed view controller um, and then the page uh, controller, which has been introduced in Swift 4.0. Uh, but the main idea is, for me is not to actually sell um, the things I wrote. But the, the main idea is to tell you guys an idea of uh, doing things. You guys can look at the codes and then develop your own. Right. I, I think the only cons of uh, using this library is that because it's developed by me. So it's not that flexible. But if you guys understand the logic behind, you develop your own kind of coordinator, and then everything will just be really, really short. Okay? So that's all. If there's any questions? Yeah. yeah uh, so thanks for, for presenting. Uh, can you go back to your source code? 
Yeah. Uh, which one? Uh, so like we will move to interface. Yeah. Is it defined in the superclass? No, it's def actually it's a protocol. No, it's an extension. Uh, so it's, a, it's defined in it. So um, because in the underlying uh, coordinator, we call it ourselves. So you don't need to worry about it. You just know that whenever, let's say, let's say in this case, right, first view uh, controller, every time you try to pass the data, this time you are trying to pass the Pokemon data, right? The moment you try to pass the Pokemon data, and because it's a tag select operation, you just come here, you know that because it's tag operation, the, um, we'll move to interface. I know the naming is a bit bad, but I'm bad with names. So. Where is the part where you call we'll move to interface? It's called automatically. It's just like view below. You don't need to care about it. Okay, but it's called before view below. All right. Is, so, is there like the code which causes it? Or oh, the code that causes it? Um, condition which causes yeah, uh, function in every component. Okay, then we have to go to the pods. Ah, Yeah, so this is the place you, you call things. Uh, but the logic, uh, I make it such that it's called before we do them. So if you guys um, are handling things um, that has to do with you, you need to create um, something, uh, you need to create, uh, what do you call, a local variable. Let me see, for example, this one local variable, to, to sort of contain it so that whenever, let's say, whenever view appears, then you load it. But the, the cool things about, about this is that if you look at this, right, all the view controllers are isolated. And they don't really talk to each other anymore. So you see all the property. Let, let's say for this pre-selected Pokemon, right? Now let's say you go to the go to this example. No, not this one. Okay. Uh, where's the other code? I think I changed it. But anyway, the main point is that all the view controllers are actually isolated. So you can put almost all, because let's say you want to pass this particular Pokemon to this guy, right? Let's say for another view controller, correct? You, you normally need to make it accessible. But this is something that we don't want, because we don't want coupling between view controllers, correct? We want them to be de de decoupled. But you think this approach, you can sort of make it private, and then you still be able to attain the data. Uh, these two view con these two method is just like the under tunnel, yeah. so they pass the data under tunnel, and nobody can notice it. Yep. Uh, any more questions? Yeah. Can you have multiple coordinators? Like yes. Um, no, you cannot have multiple coordinators. Um, what if I want to learn multiple coordinators and the applications? You only can have multiple scenes because a coordinator, like I say, right? The original implementation is that every like there is only that there, there will be multiple coordinators coordinating something, correct? So I have like I have a let me I show you this example, right? So I have a main view coordinator. So he, his job is simple. I only coordinate a main view controller. If I if main view controller needs to go to let's say currency list coordinator, this is my job. I take care of it, correct? So there will be multiple view con uh, coordinators because you need to take care of every view controller. But in the in the sort of the source code, in, in the sort of the method I wrote, what I do is that I think that that is very troublesome. You need to maintain the entire thing. So what I do is that I have this central coordinator, just one guy. He does all the coordinating for you. Yes, but that's a uh, long indicator. Suppose uh, two applications in the single application, but they run in a different mode when depend upon the user. Okay, for example, let's say, give me an example that you will need a multiple coordinator. Mm -hmm. You don't need to, uh, like for this one, right, the, the modified one set. Uh, actually, have you finished? I'll show you, you can continue. Sorry yeah, for interrupting. It's the same thing. So, two applications with two coordinators, each single one. Mm -hmm. Now I want to combine them together. Now, so should I create a new coordinator 
from the beginning just so that because I want to merge those two applications together or should I just use two coordinators and then create one more like a parent coordinator and then merge together? Okay, the idea is this, right? Now let's say you look at the code, so you will see that actually there is no coordinator creation. Do you, do you get what I mean? So let's say, okay, we are not talking about the library. Let's say we just talk about the, the underlying idea of creating a stack, correct? So now let's say you want to merge two, two apps, have two different coordinators, right? Now let's say you, you have sort of instructed the original coordinator, let's say the first few controller coordinator, to be able to coordinate all kinds of data, and then the second, second guy has all the conforming data. Then yes, you only need one coordinator. Like I say, for example, um, this is the only thing, right? See, this is the only thing that you need to define. This, are only, this is the only data required. But this is only for one application. Yes, then you need to... Oh, you just need to say that in another scene. That's it. If I understand your, your question correct, then you can define anything. Like, like I said, you see the story bundle here normally returns new, right? Because usually we just use our own story bundle in that. We don't use some. But you can define some other story bundle you want. The, the coordinate will still work. But of course, let's say, let's, say, let's say you just implemented the idea yourself, and then they are somewhat different. Then you need to coordinate yourself, right? because you cannot put two incompatible data together, right? But then the idea is that, yes, if you want to merge them, right? One coordinator is enough, no matter how big you want to merge them. But like I say, that, there's nothing comes for free. You need, you need to look at how you architected your app and a lot of other factors in order to decide uh, how you want to refactor things. Is that okay? Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, does your coordinator know something about UIKit, or is completely isolated and abstracted from it? Uh, because it deals with view controllers, so yeah, it's actually uh, it depends. It's, it's dependent on UIKit. Do you think is it, is it a problem of your, of your um, solution or not? Actually, actually, I was thinking about it. Uh, maybe we can do it using the memory, uh, you know, the unsafe pointer to actually find the location of view controller and then store it that way, rather than using a view controller and stuff. But not really, because um, because this app also helps creation of uh, view controller. For example, let's say let's say let's say let's say here, right? For example, let's say here. I say that's in coordinator, right? Now I want to coordinate it to some view controller in the main story box, and then I can present. Let's say I can present a navbar bar together with it. That means that you don't need to create a bar. No, normally you need to create a neighbor, put the guy as the root view controller neighbor, then we present it, right? But in this case, you don't. And for the convenience of it, I created something like that. So yeah, it will be dependent on UIKit. Is it a problem? As long as UIKit doesn't screw up, I think that it isn't a problem. Yeah. yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, how would you use this pattern to... Uh, <coughs> create, to use deep linking into the application. So for example, if Spotify wants to open an album, or in this case, a Pokemon details, um, the name of the Pokemon, do you think it's suitable for that? It's usable for that, but I haven't like it, uh, I don't want to give anything that is uh, uncertain. I haven't as well, I haven't really created a big app or medium size app in order for me to test out all the things. For example, when I create this Pokemon app, uh, Actually, I found that there was some problem and I fixed it along the way. So, deep linking, I haven't really tried yet, but I think that it's feasible. Because all you need to really care is about is this function in yourself. Right? Because if somebody sort of call me, I just, I just call someone else. So, it is possible, but, I, but you will need more tests. Like, like for me, I, I usually like to create a bigger app in order for me to test the feasibility of a thing. So, I can't really answer you for certain. But the possibility is, it is that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, if you're still interested, can you ask him later?